we want to continue to talk about what's going on with sovereign debt because we had another development on that front today of Fitch ratings actually cutting Portugal's credit grade for the first time. The rating now goes to double A minus. It's got a negative outlook. Fitch saying the country's economic outlook is weaker than its European Union peers. We're joined now by the head of global economics at Fitch ratings. That's Brian Colton. He is in our London studio. Uh, Brian, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Obviously, very timely uh, given Fitch ratings cut today. So talk to us in the rationale. It says that Portugal's economy is on weaker footing. Why is that? Um, a, a number of reasons. I mean, its, uh, it's competitiveness over the last last 10, 15 years has really been has really deteriorated quite a lot. It's been running very large current account deficits, lost quite a lot of market share. Um, you know, it's an economy which isn't really particularly flexible. The labour market is, is quite uh, is, is quite rigid in Portugal. There's been some improvements in the last few years, and it's just been a, a, you know a secular slow growth story. Along has come this fiscal shock, and, and, and it's just really that that that, that combination. Of, the, of, a, of a pretty big fiscal shock with an underlying weak macro position has, has, is what's given us concern. Uh, Brian, I'm curious though, why now? Why didn't Fitch cut the rating already? Because at least to some folks, some economists in Europe, they were watching Portugal go down this road for quite some time. Um, Things deteriorated in, in Portugal, uh, the, the middle of the, uh, the, the the middle of the decade. But then the, the government did quite a good job of turning it round. Actually, um, made some quite significant progress in terms of uh, cutting uh, cutting the headcount of, of, of public sector workers, um, and and uh, additionally in pension reform it made made some good progress. So they they kind of stopped the rod, and things are, things had definitely stabilised up until the crisis. Unfortunately, the crisis, uh, the, the recession in Spain, which has hit Portugal very hard has, has seen uh, their budget deficit blow out much wider than they originally projected uh, and when you have that sort of a fiscal shock against that underlying weakness that's really what has, has, has caused this, uh, this this change in assessment now obviously we had to wait until we saw the government's plans those plans we think are, are credible but the, the debt nevertheless is going to be a lot higher um, and, and we we still want to wait and see whether or not they can deliver the fiscal adjustment in the third fourth year of the program where and the deficit falls most rapidly, I and mean, it's quite backloaded this this program. Right. And we just want to wait and see if if they, if they deliver on that before we stabilise the outlook. And then, and Brian, uh, speaking of stabilising the outlook, is is there any fear or is there any talk now because of what happened with Portugal and Fitch today of a possible contagion in the eurozone? Um, I, I'm not sure. I mean, when, you know, when you look at what's happened to spreads in the eurozone through the uh, the course of the Greek crisis, I mean, the spreads have moved where, where widest, where the countries have the largest fiscal deficits, and therefore the the biggest challenges going forward in terms of of stabilising the debt ratio. I don't think there's been this sort of irrational contagion across markets. You know, every peripheral euro area borrower has been affected because that that that's not been true. There's been a lot of smaller countries that have, that have not been affected. Ireland's not been affected through this through this crisis. Italy is a high debt country but its deficit has remained relatively small, relatively relatively modest. So um, you know the, the, the market has, has picked out the countries with, with the biggest deficit. So those countries you know still have the challenge of explaining how they, they're going to turn the situation right. uh, uh, around. We, we don't expect uh, irrational contagion from this. Uh, at, at some point uh, this is going to be obviously discussed by uh, officials in Portugal. Uh, as a matter of fact tomorrow the Portuguese Parliament is going to debate the government's austerity plan. What do lawmakers in Portugal need to say to allay the fears of officials in the Eurozone? Um, well, you know, we've looked at this plan. As I say, we, we, we wanted to, to have all the information in front of us before we took the action. Um, you know, we're not downgrading because we don't like this plan per se. We're downgrading because of because of the facts in front of us in terms of how much the debt is rising and how much the deficit, uh, uh, how, how big the deficit is, and how how weak the economy economy looks. Uh, in, in terms of, of the plan itself, I think they've done a relatively decent job. It's, 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 it's expenditure focused and there's quite a lot of detail in there in terms of how they're going to slow down social benefit expenditure. They're going to use means testing for benefits. Um, I think given their track record, which has, as I said at the beginning of, of, of the piece, has been relatively decent, I think they will, they will deliver on it. But that doesn't alter the fact that, uh, that the balance sheet is, is going to be uh, permanently weakened as a result of this. But we're not down, we haven't downgraded today because we don't like the plan. 
Brian, I, I would be remiss if I didn't ask you about the U.K. today because uh, the, the country out with a new budget deficit forecast that is 44 billion pounds lower for the next uh, fiscal five, five fiscal years, 567 billion pounds. Uh, how does that affect your forecast, if at all, and your outlook uh, for the, the credit rating of the U.K.? It uh, doesn't really change our assessment. You know, we've, we've expressed concerns about the the, uh, the fiscal challenge ahead in the UK uh, on several occasions, and, and those concerns remain today. But they're certainly not any worse today than they were yesterday. We've had a little bit of good news in terms of the 2009-10 deficit, um, and the government has chosen not to not to spend the the additional revenue that it, that it's got in over and above its forecast. Uh, the majority of the 11 billion windfall is actually being devoted to uh, to, uh, to to faster the debt reduction, but the broad picture remains of, of a pretty slow deficit decline from, from 2011, and the public debt ratio to GDP doesn't, doesn't peak until 2014-15, uh, and, and we think that is, that is a, a, a pretty slow rate of consolidation and leaves the UK vulnerable to, to shocks going forward. Brian, uh, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for commenting on the UK as well. Brian Colton of Fitch Ratings joining us from London today.